So we already learned about uh, why and how NGS is going to help us uh, um, characterize different whole genome sequences of these infectious diseases and why uh, in the context of why it is going to be very important in uh, perform an analysis like next gen sequencing analysis, uh, sequencing methodology to uh, identify or to sequence the whole genome of uh, pathogens. So let's, let's go through some of the important concepts or some of the important outlines of how uh, next gen sequencing data is generated and what are the different file forms uh, that are uh, associated with the next gen sequencing data and how we can uh, use the Taubert Bioinfo platform to run a uh, pipeline for this sequencing uh, data analysis. So yeah, uh, so this is very important because it, it is related to our ability to compare the DNA code of any given uh, uh, system, uh, in this case, like uh, a virus or, a, or even a bacteria to a reference uh, se sequence of the same system. Like um, if, you, if you want to identify a new strain in the, uh, that is circulating around in, uh, in during this pandemic, then we se sequence this, um, sequence the data from the samples uh, that have a different behavioral characteristics or the different uh, virulence, and then compare it with the reference genome that is uh, characterized in the uh, database. So let's, uh, this is, these, these analyses and these different, uh, these, um, and these uh, different technologies are made possible through the advances that takes millions and millions of uh, cheaply generated short read sequences and align them to a reference uh, that will help us extract meaningful insights uh, in the biological system that we are considering. So this sequencing technology actually helps us to explore genetic variations like, um, like never before. Like uh, we can uh, use different types of these sequencing to address the particular uh, uh, specific need that we want to uh, address. Like in the case of a targeted sequencing panel, we will have high coverage, but we are going to target only 40 to 400 genes in, the, in terms of um, uh, human genome. Or if you want to target specific genes in terms of uh, viral genome, we don't have to do that because viral sequences or genomes are tend to be uh, very short uh, in length and people go for whole genome sequencing of pathogens uh, that is like virus, et cetera. But in terms of a human genome, then we can use uh, targeted sequencing or whole exome sequencing or whole genome sequencing to uh, tailor the kind of uh, sequencing uh, experiment that we want to perform on the samples that we have. So these three different sequencing efforts, they have uh, their own uh, advantages and disadvantages. So some of the advantages that uh, would um, uh, categorize or differentiate them is the, is the questions or the, is the um, biological implications that they can be used to, to perform, like whole genome sequencing can be helped, uh, uh, even though in spite of low coverage, uh, can be performed on a large number of samples to identify uh, specifically um, those variants which are very rare and their association with the disease state or association with the phenotypical history that the uh, um, samples are uh, actually uh, representing or depicting. Whole exome sequencing will give you a trans transcriptomic snapshot of the, uh, of the system at the particular time. So that is going to give you the expression profiles or the, give you the expression quantification of all the um, coding, uh, coding genes uh, at that particular uh, snapshot. And targeted sequencing panel will help you specifically target uh, little portions of uh, the genome so that we can um, perform or we can understand their variation with respect to the reference sequence at a very high coverage so that very rare mutations and very rare uh, variants can be analyzed and identified and then addressed, uh, uh, addressed with, with a lot of confidence. So, uh, so how this is done? So this is done by, uh, uh, yeah, this is done by, uh, uh, by first um, collecting or first uh, sharing the genomic DNA into, uh, uh, into multiple small uh, uh, fragments of 200 to 300 base pairs. And then we attach the uh, adapters to these, uh, uh, to these fragments. And then these adap adapters are then, uh, attached adapters are then uh, applied to the flow cell where they are uh, then um, uh, amplified using a bridge PCR uh, technique. And then uh, these amplified uh, uh, shared fragments are then sequenced by the sequencer machine uh, in, um, and these sequenced uh, fragments are called as sequence calls, uh, depending upon their uh, specific nucleotide in A, T, G, or C. So, so the, uh, the NGS sequencing machine or sequencing technology basically converts or basically uh, takes the 
uh, biological sample and converts them into a digital sequencing data that it uh, gives us an output in the form of FASTQ files. So these outputs that we have uh, from the NGS sequencing uh, uh, machines and NGS sequencing technology or high throughput sequencing technology are given us in uh, FASTQ format. So FASTQ format is, yes, a FASTQ format uh, uh, and we uh, we also, there is also another uh, format that is uh, uh, related to FASTQ and is very, uh, very important in the uh, analysis pipeline of this uh, NGA sequencing sequencing data, uh, that is FASTA format and GTA format. Let's go through FASTQ format first and then let's come back to the FASTA format. Uh, so the FASTQ format, the FASTQ file reads uh, like this. So the FASTQ file has a, a starting uh, header which contains the important information such as the uh, read name, their length, and different uh, sample characteristics, and all the different uh, characteristics that one can associate with this particular read. And uh, the next line um, uh, uh, describes the next line actually depicts the actual calls of the nucleotide themselves. So this, these are the actual uh, actual reads, uh, actual uh, um, sequences that are sequenced by the NGS uh, um, sequencers. And then we have a separator that is usually uh, that usually separates these uh, base calls from the quality scores that is associated with each one of these base calls and that separator is a uh, is a plus sign and sometimes this uh, this separator line is also populated with the same information that one finds with the header so and then after this separator we get the uh, quality scores that is associated with each and every one of these base calls in ascii format so these each and every one of these uh, characters represent or they actually tell us how confident we are or how confident the uh, sequencing um, technology is about uh, the placement or about the call of this particular um, re, uh, particular base at that at that specific position. This is used right throughout our downstream analysis, where first this is used to filter uh, those reads which are of low quality, and then even until the end, where we can associate our um, variant uh, through the um, variant uh, identified variants uh, uh, with the um, quality score that uh, that it is attached to or that it is called with. So let's go back to the FASTA file format. This is another file format which is used usually used in the uh, NGS sequencing pipeline where when, when, when we have to map the FASTQ files or the reads in the FASTQ files format to the reference genome. So FASTA file format is usually reserved for the reference genome where this uh, file format is a very simple text-based file format where the first line sta usually starts with a greater than symbol and then what follows is the header for this FASTQ file, FASTA file um, for the whole genome sequence of this uh, file. So um, this header will have important information like accession ID, the name of the species. And uh, in addition to that, they can also have the strain names or isolate names or, or the type of uh, um, technology used to sequence this data and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and after that, what follows is the actual whole genome sequence of this, uh, whole genome sequence of this particular species. For example, in this, uh, it's, uh, it's Protoptera, and in this case, it's a rabies virus. So this is the this is the genome sequence right from the first nucleotide to the last nucleotide uh, given in a in a one single line or one single uh, uh, entry. So this doesn't actually describe uh, uh, in terms of uh, eukaryotic genome, which portions of this uh, genome sequence are coding sequences or which portions of this genome sequence are non-coding sequences or which uh, which portions are exon, exon or intron in terms of within the gene. So that information is actually loaded or that information is actually supplied with the GTF file. So the, or GFF file, um, which tells us at what position can we find the uh, uh, coding uh, region, at what position can we find the um, exons and what position can we find the uh, non-coding regions of this in this uh, FASTA file uh, for the reference uh, sequence. So. These three are absolutely essential for performing a uh, um, performing a NGS uh, uh, pipeline analysis of uh, um, sequenced data. Uh, and what happens is the FASTQ files, which represent the reads that are uh, uh, that are sequenced, they are mapped onto the reference uh, genome, which in the FASTA files. Uh, here you can see the reference genome, and then these are the reads that are mapped onto this particular position, specific position, based on their sequence uh, alignment or based on their sequence identity on this one. So here, uh, it's, yeah, this is an, a detailed view of how this is performed and how this can be visualized. So uh, 
in this in this representation here this this gray bar of, uh, represents the genome sequence uh, and uh, this um, uh, big gray bar represents the gene and these ones are non coding areas non coding regions and these blue bars and uh, red bars represents the uh, the red bars and blue bars represents the um, uh, forward strand and reverse strand uh, respectively and uh, they can be mapped like this onto the reference genome and then identify and then their specific uh, uh, and the variation that is present in these FOSQ files with respect to the uh, reference genome can be identified and then they can be characterized. So to visualize the whole mapping and the whole um, uh, and the processes of this uh, mapping and output, uh, they can be visualized using uh, some visualizing tool like a J browser or IGD. And uh, uh, these are the use, uh, standard visualizing tools that one uses to visualize this uh, mapping algorithm. Uh, so here, so here we have the reference sequence that is mentioned in this one. And then what follows is the consensus or what follows is the uh, coverage of this, uh, uh, of this mapped uh, uh, reads. So uh, we, have, we do not have a uniform coverage because of the technology. It is not uniformly uh, read or it's not uniformly uh, sequenced at all the levels. So these chunks of small FASTQ files, as these chunks of small reads, they get mapped to the genome and based on their uh, based on the uh, uh, coverage, like here we have really high coverage where we have many, very many reads that are uh, aligned at this position. So we see that the coverage is really high, but here the coverage is very, very low or very shallow because we do not have a lot of reads at this particular position. So these, um, these can be visualized and, the, uh, and uh, in addition to visualizing the mapping of these uh, reads onto the genome, we can also uh, identify specific uh, mutation at these positions, which can also be uh, visualized uh, in this one. So let me quickly go to uh, Turbot Bioinfo platform and uh, show you how to run a, a simple visualization pipeline for, uh, um, uh, for a viral genome. So let's take it forward there and, uh, uh, and then come back again to here, uh, share screen. Can you see my screen? I think you can see my screen. Let's, yeah, let's go to server.tbioinfo. And then here, if you uh, go to genomics analysis and then, and then under mutation variant and parallel analysis of mutation variant data, you drop down. So we have prepared some uh, demo pipelines and demo, uh, 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 yeah, demo pipelines, which will give you the feeling of running this analysis or running this pipeline, building up this pipeline for this sequence analysis. And then uh, you can access the output files and you can uh, perform the similar analysis that we are performing in the, uh, using the output file. You can visualize, you can perform a downstream analysis with the output file and you can learn what uh, these uh, files can be, what these uh, uh, um, pipelines can be built for and how the output can be uh, uh, like leverage to perform multiple analysis. So let's, yeah, let's uh, build this start. Uh, here, usually the input files are uh, uploaded because it is a, a demo pipeline. And we uh, then after starting, we map the reads onto the uh, genome using Bautai2 algorithm. And we go there. And then after this, we uh, complete this pipeline with visualization. Uh, tool and we end the, end the pipeline. And after you end the pipeline, you get access to download all the pipeline results where we have uh, the mapping statistics of these uh, reads mapped onto the genome. And we have the uh, sequence alignment map or a uh, SAM file, which is the uh, alignment file, uh, mapped file in, in a, in a, yeah, in a uh, uh, SAM format. This is also this can also be given in a binary alignment map file in binary format. And we have the input FASTQ files that we have provided for this mapping or provided for this uh, analysis. And this is the, um, yeah, I think this is the reference genome. And then let's, if under 